Okay, here we're going to look at Lagrange's theorem for polynomials. So not to be confused with Lagrange's theorem from group theory, which is perhaps a little more famous. So it says that if p is a prime and f of x is a polynomial with integer coefficients, then, um, and, okay, here we're going to look at Lagrange's theorem for polynomials. So it says that if p is prime and f of x is a polynomial with integer coefficients of degree bigger than or equal to 1, then there are at most d congruence classes of solutions to the polynomial congruence uh, f of x is congruent to 0 mod p. Okay, so the proof will go uh, by induction. So let's look at that. So let's make our base case for our induction. which would be the degree of the polynomial equals 1. Good. So in that case, we have our polynomial must be of the form ax plus b, where a and b are integers. Great. And that means uh, the polynomial congruence that we need to solve is the same thing as the linear congruence AX is congruent to B, negative B mod P. Okay, good. And then from the theory of linear congruences, which I have a couple of videos of and we've covered in the past, we know that this has a unique solution um, given by X equals A inverse times negative B if the GCD of A and P is equal to 1, which that's the same thing as P does not divide A. Good. And then, so a unique solution means it has exactly one solution. And then the second case is this has no solution if the GCD of A and P is not equal to 1. But notice, if you have a prime and you're looking at the GCD of A and a prime, it, the only chances are that it could be 1 or that prime, which is the same thing as P divides A. So we can very, very easily see that if P divides A, then we have PX is congruent to negative B mod P. But notice that this part is equal to 0, which is congruent to negative B. Um, but there's no solution to that unless b was also equal to zero. Good. Um, and if b was also equal to zero, then uh, we would have ended up with uh, zero polynomial in the first place, which is not you know what kind of we're interested in. Okay, good. So now this is the base case for the induction. So uh, I'll clean up the board and then we'll move on with the proof. Okay, so moving on with the proof, we'll make the following induction hypothesis. So let's suppose for all polynomials of degree k, the statement is true. Is true. Good. And then let's let f of x be of degree k plus 1. Okay, good. So uh, now we have two cases. So case number 1, so case number 1, f of x congruent to 0 mod p has 0 solutions. So if it has zero solutions, then we're already done because zero is most definitely less than k plus one. And that is allowed by this theorem. So case number two, case number two is f of x is congruent to zero mod p has at least one solution, maybe call, let's call it a. Good. So um, now uh, let's notice that that means that f of a is congruent to 0 mod p. 
And then we'll also need a bit uh, more notation. So let's also set f of x equal to the following. So it'll be the sum from i equals 0 to k plus 1 of c of i x to the i. Good. So now we have this setup. We know f of a is congruent to 0 mod p because it is a solution to this polynomial congruence. And then we've also made a form for f of x. So f of x is the sum from i equals 0 to k plus 1 of c i x i. In other words, it is c k plus 1 x to the k plus 1 all the way down to c 0. Good. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll move from there. Okay, so let's remind ourselves that we left ourselves with the setup that f of a is congruent to 0 mod p and we had this version of f of x given by this sum. Good. So from there we want to look at the following object. So let's consider f of x minus f of a. Good. And so that's going to be the same thing as the sum um, i equals 0 to k plus 1 of c of i and then x i minus a to the i. Great. And then from here, we can factor this using kind of a well-known factoring formula. So this is equal to the sum i equals 0 to k plus 1 of c i x minus a. Good. And then x i plus 1 plus a i, sorry, x to the i minus 1 and then ai um, x to the i minus 2 plus all the way down to a to the i minus 1. Okay, so, the, so we've got something like that. And now notice that we can factor an x minus a out of that, especially noticing that we can actually take this sum going from 1 um, to k plus 1 because the zeroth term cancels. And notice that that is going to give us x minus a times another function g of x and further the degree of g of x equals k. Great. And so now, okay, so now let's see that we have f of a is congruent to 0 mod p and then we're looking at this object f of x minus f of a well so since f of a is congruent to 0 mod p that means we can say f of x is congruent to x minus a times g of x mod p good so further solving the the polynomial congruence f of x is congruent to 0 mod p is equivalent to solving the congruence x minus a times g of x is congruent to 0 mod p. And now solving that tells us that p either divides x minus a or p divides g of x. So we've seen there's exactly one way that this can happen. And then furthermore, um, there are at most k ways that this can happen. So putting all that together, there are k plus 1, k plus 1 possible solutions. And I should say at most k plus 1 possible solutions. Okay, so that's the end of the proof.